Hello and welcome to the fifth video in my part five series for the Java MTA course. In this video, we're going to be looking at exceptions and looking at what methods we can use from our exception to get the details of that exception. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the key points that you must learn for the exam. And then I'm going to show you some code and ask some questions to cement the information learned in this section. So the most important thing that you must know is uh, the try and catch statement so if you are unaware of what the try and catch statement is then you need to go back and watch some of my other videos additionally do remember that in the catch statement that exception object can be different types of exception so that exception that's in the catch at the moment is like the parent class but you could have um, a more specific exception using that so if you're not aware about the different types of exceptions that you can catch in the try catch code then again i would suggest looking at some of my previous videos in this video we're going to be talking about what methods you can call with this e this instant of this exception so for example if you put e get class so if you use the get class method it returns an instant of that class so it tells you what is the instant of that class and then once we've done that, then we can call additional methods from that instance. The get message returns the message of the object, which is used to describe the error. So for example, if you have an arithmetic error and you're trying to divide by zero, it would produce the description that you're not allowed to divide by zero. So it's telling you why your error is being created. The ePrint stack trace can then be used to print the stack trace. So we've covered this in previous videos. So if you're unaware of what the tr stack trace is, then I would recommend you watching one of my the video on that. The last one is the fill in stack trace. So this can start filling in the current state of the stack trace. Now, some people can get confused by this last method, but it'll start making sense once I start showing you the code and the difference between the print stack trace and the fill in stack trace. So let's have a look at some code. Okay, so we're gonna talk about some questions about the print stack trace versus the fill in stack trace. So this is the code that we're gonna use. There is a number of methods um, within this code and the the code kind of flows between these methods. So what I would like you to do is have a look at these methods or have a look at the code and answer these questions. So from this code, which one do you think will be executed? What will be outputted when you execute this code? Um, what line of code would you need to delete to change the output from the one it is to the other version of that? And then what information would you uh, would be in the stack trace if you just wrote out the system dot out dot print and then e fill in stack trace. So if you got rid of all of them and you just printed out this, what would be displayed? So stop the video now and see if you can answer these three questions. So hopefully you've paused the video. Uh, let's go through some of the answers. So what will be outputted from this code? Um, so if we look at the main method, we can see the main method starts on line four and it goes to stage one method, which goes down here. And in the stage one method, we have a try catch statement. Um, the try catch statement um, takes us to the stage method or stage two method, which throws an exception, which will then be caught by the catch statement here. So in this catch statement, we have um, two methods from the EX instance. The first one prints the stack trace, which is, again, the journey of that error. So we're looking at something that goes from line 4 to line 12 um, and then throws that exception at line 8. And you can see both of them do that so they're both just printing that stack trace showing the journey from it if we look at the second one now the second method the fill in stack trace what that is doing is it's filling in 
that stack trace. So it's going to remove the stack trace from previously and start filling it in, which then takes us on to line 16. And then on line 16, we, we're calling another method called saving stack trace, which goes down to line 20. And this prints the stack trace here. So what will happen is we're looking for something that shows us that we've we've encountered an issue in line 15 because that's when we're filling in the stack trace and then we print it. So if we look here in this one, this is removed line 12 and 8 from the previous stack trace and they've inputted line 15. So number one would be the result of this code. And the reason why this can be quite useful is if you've got code that bounces around a lot of methods and you don't want a very complex stack trace in your code when you are finding an error and you want to simplify it, you can use this fill in stack trace to allow you to simplify that stack trace so you know exactly where the issue is. Um, number two, what line of code would you need to delete? So actually, I'll just put one there. What line of code would you need to delete to change the output um, from number one to number two? So if we remove everything here, so do remember number two is just printing out the same st uh, stack trace twice. So if you want to print out the same stack trace twice, what line of code would we have to remove? Well, we would just need to delete that fill in stack trace. And what that will do is it will uh, hold the, the stack trace that is created from the error. Um, and then in line 16, we go down to that method again, and we just reprint that uh, stack trace. So we'll have two of them. And then the last question, number three, if you just printed out this, what would be displayed? Well, do remember this is filling in. Um, this is filling in the stack trace. So if you printed just this method out directly, you would not have anything in the stack trace to begin with. So it would be the stack trace would actually be completely em empty until you, you know, did something with it. For example, print it out, and you would just display the exception as well as the message. So that's what would be the result of that. Okay, so to continue, um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna throw some more questions at you. So we have this code here, and this is talking about the e get message method, as well as the get class. So what again I want you to try and do is pause the video and link up the code with its output. And then number two, this is just a kind of review about all the methods. We have four scenarios here. What method do you think will, will uh, be used for each scenario? So hopefully you paused the, paused the video. Let's go through them. So the first one here, if we look here, we're, we're looking at the class and the exception. So we're kind of looking at the instant that we've just created. So that one will look up uh, would match up to the get class one. So if we're looking for the uh, instance of that class, we're going to be using the get class. If we see here, this is a just the message from our uh, exception. So we're using the method get message. So that matches up with that. So we can see how they matched up there. Number two, let's have a look at each of the scenarios. So the first one prints out an instance of the exception. Well, like we said before, um, that would be the get class. So you have to be uh, careful with the terminology there because it's printing out that instance. The second one displays only the error description. Well, that matches up with the get message. Number three shows the full journey of the exception. Well, that's talking about that print stack flow or sorry, that print stack trace. And the last one that shows the exception and its message. So this is a little bit of a, um, a trick question. So the only one, even though it fills in that stack trace, if you print it, 
um, directly out, it will show the exception and its message, but not the journey because it hasn't started yet. So the last one is that fill in stack trace method. So we're going to end the video and I just want you to check the knowledge from the video. So can you remember those four methods that we use in the video? So if you can, you're well on your way to passing that MTA course or that MTA Java exam. Are you able to explain the difference between a print stack trace and a fill in stack trace? So if that's good, um, then that's even better. And lastly, can you kind of create your own definitions for each of the methods? So if you can create your own definitions, it'll help you remember for the exam. So if you found this video useful, please like it. And if you would like to follow the rest of my MTA prep course, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.